Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to have a lobster dish that is uh, part of our series for the mother sauces with a bechamel. So basically when you're picking up your lobster, you have to make sure they're nice and healthy like this one. It has long antennas, good body, solid shell, and those antennas has to be gorgeous and sexy just like you can see here right now. So one is chewed up a little bit. That means they've been in a tank for a little too long. It's because after, I don't know, a week or so, they're starting to eat each other and you don't want that. So what you're looking for as well is a female they are kind of better in my opinion and then the other one is a male but whoop we just realized it's two female which is a good thing so we're gonna use them both trust me they're as tasty as the male but in my opinion the female are sweet and there's eggs in there that you want to be using for our bechamel dish for a better humane way to uh cook those lobster we're gonna put them in a the freezer for 15 minutes so what's so magical about making mother sauces is you can uh, use them after to make different sauces. So basically today we're going to make a bechamel sauce that will eventually transform into a mornay sauce, which is one of my favorite. So the secret here is to warm up your milk. And at this point, what is really important too as well, it's a little tip for chefs, is to put an onion pique. An onion pique is like onion, uh, clove and bay leaf, and that's going to infuse our milk. And that's a classical technique that we use in the industry. So go for it, guys. You're going to have so much flavor that way so while the milk is infusing we're gonna melt her butter and we're gonna make a classical white root so really important here you put equal part of uh, fat and flour so it's 50 gram of each at this point we're gonna stir this up really well make sure your butter is fully melted before you add your flour don't do like I'm about to do <laughs> because I'm just gonna dump it right now. It's a little bit important that you put it for like two or three minutes to make sure the flour cooks a little bit because you don't want that flour taste. Nice and foamy, this smells so nutty right now. So at this point, we're gonna put the milk in two stages, just a little bit to start with to make sure there's no clumps. And then as soon as it looks smooth, you're just gonna have the rest just in one go. Don't be stressed out, don't be scared, just go for it. Yes, just like that. Onion and everything, don't worry. We're gonna strain this at the end if you want, but we're gonna take the uh, little onion out. So now we're gonna use fresh that make none of that bullshit pre-grounded, all right guys? Microplane and you just go for it. I would say maybe 20 stroke if you really wanna be technical here. I think it was half a gram and then of course cracked pepper. You know me, cracked pepper on everything here. It's just like hot sauce and salt, kosher salt, none of that iodized salt. Whiskey, whiskey, stirry, stirry. Take our onion out. You don't wanna choke on that guys. It's kinda of hard to swallow. Stir, 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 and this is, looks ready to me. We're just gonna put it on the back burner there and let it sit for until we're ready with our lobster. Give it a taste, chef. What are you doing? À la so at this point, we're gonna put that in a bowl for now because we're gonna transform this bechamel into a mornay sauce. Mornay sauce is a very classical French and to this, we're gonna add our cheeses. You have to add this while the sauce is hot so that way it melts properly. 40 grams of Gruyere cheese already grated and then the Parmesan cheese, which is 20 gram. Very, very good stuff. Reggiano Parmigiano. Don't use any of the uh, pre-crap grated stuff. All right, guys, they <laughs> keep it classical. We're gonna stir that up make sure it's all melted down uh, this is a good base for mac and cheese at this point you put pasta and just bake it in the oven you have a winner on hand right here we're gonna cover this with uh, clean film wrap right on top of it so it doesn't make a skin so now at this point boiling water heavily salted it has to taste like the sea of course our lobster are just out of our freezer so head first goes inside eight minutes we're gonna put this in the back and we're gonna start on our sauce here. We're gonna put oil, a little bit of uh, butter, and we're gonna saute our quartered mushroom, 100 gram of them. So we're doing a recipe here for four people. I forgot to mention that. So one shallot, 30 grams. You can add more if you like, it's all up to you. And just tossy tossy, this thing looks, it needs a little bit. Pepper, yeah, it's important to put pepper, you know me, salt. It's very important to season at every stage, guys. That's what makes a big difference. A little bit more oil. Yes, the mushrooms sucked everything up, so you have to make sure they get colored. Not too brown, but just slightly blonde. And then one chopped up garlic clove. Tossy, tossy, yummy, yummy. At this point, we're gonna put our, herb, our, our herbs, herbs, very important, that are from my garden. I'm Mr. Green Thumb, as you know, so time first, no stems. It's hard to chew, gets between your teeth, you don't want that. Tarragon, one of my favorite herbs, very uh, flavorful. And we're gonna deglaze here with sherry. You can use uh, cognac if you want, but classical is sherry. No white wine at this point. 
So classically, we usually put uh, mustard powder. That's up to you. You can put Dijon if you don't have mustard powder, but you know me, I go by the rules here. It's very important that at this point, guys, too, we had a lot of liquid, so our bechamel is really thick, so we want to keep that thick, so as dry as possible is key here. So reduce this as much as you can, a sec in a French term, and we're just going to add this to our uh, Mornay sauce. So we're going to bring that baby back here, and of course, we're going to put the mushroom inside and then taste it after. We're just going to make sure it's not over seasoned. So guys, at this point, make sure it's really well mixed, well coated, and just by stirring it up like this, I can see it's perfect uh, consistency, consistence. Yeah, look at that, so sexy. I can't wait to see that final dish. This baby is gonna go in the lobster and gonna be so yummy, gummy, yummy, yummy, yummy. So guys, now it's been eight minutes. We're gonna take these lobster out. Uh, make sure you got an ice bat, like water and ice cube in there. Basically, it's about uh, eight minutes to every pound of lobster. So these are about uh, one pound and a quarter, right in an ice bat like this. They're not fully cooked, you gotta keep that in mind. Almost, but we want that because they go back in the oven with the mixture of a uh, Mornay sauce and mushroom there. We're gonna let them sit in the ice bath for 10 minutes. So now the fun parts could start. We're gonna have to break those down. Uh, basically, take the claws off. It's gonna get messy, guys. You're gonna have to grab a knife that you don't really care for because we're gonna cut through this shell. So you're gonna straighten up the tail, make sure you point that little pointy knife right in the head and just go all along there, all the way in the head too as well. So guys, we're gonna empty everything out, even the head there, because we need space to put our mixture of Mornay sauce and all these little crappy bits, put it aside, it's not really edible. Some people eat it, but I would suggest not to put it in your sauce. And there's knuckles on this lobster that we're gonna get meat out. Like this little part there, it's very important that you empty it out. You paid a lot of money for that lobster, so every bits count. So you keep that shell, put it aside. So we're gonna grab the second half here and we're gonna empty it out. But there's some roll here, you don't want it to wait any of this this is flavor so it turns out to be green and red when it's cooked so you tons of flavor it's really important you put that in your sauce and then again these little uh, nuggets of love you're gonna keep that it's very important and that we're gonna empty the cavity of the head there which is kind of a lot of caca poo poo it's not really uh, appealing and there's gonna be some juices we got to keep that juice we got to put that in our bowl there see how sexy that is you need that all empty juice is flavor Second one here, just grab your knife and go for it. You've done one already, I'm quite sure you build up some confidence to do the second one with your eyes closed this time. Yeah, there we go. Look at this one, and that's the pretty one, guys, so make sure you put extra care and love in this one. Look how sexy that is. That's a nice tail right there, oh my god. That row again, we gotta save that, guys. It's gonna go in our sauce, flavor town, right here. And then we're gonna clear that head there. These little nuggets, there's still some room here, we gotta keep that. But then this is not too appealing, and then we gotta take that off. Like, it's not edible. Some people eat it, but for our dish today, we're not gonna skip that dish. And if you're really, really uh, disgusted by this, like picky about this, we can rinse it out underwater. But again, you're rinsing out a lot of flavor. So the claws now, we're gonna take the little nugget out and you're gonna break it apart. Don't be gentle. Then there's gonna be like a little cartilage feather, it looks like, and you pull that out. Then you're gonna grab the back of your knife and you're gonna smash that thing. Make sure it's like broken in half, wiggle it a little bit, then that meat's gonna come off. Yeah, there you go. Just like, just like butter. That's the eight minute cooking time that helps us out to take that meat out. Second claw. So weirdly enough, we're gonna call this the thumb of the claw, let's say, okay? So you wiggle it, then it comes off. There's a little bit feathered, some left was left inside, so we gotta break that part. The lobster cracker, you'll see this is pretty easier actually than the knife if you wanna save the pain to almost break your knife there. So wiggle it, nice piece of meat right there. See, that's a perfect for a cocktail, uh, shrimp or dish, something like that. This, you don't wanna chew on that, but it's okay. We're gonna chop it up into pieces, so it doesn't really matter. So all these bits and pieces, guys, you can freeze that, or if you want, make a bisque. All right, look at that sexy meat, man. It's about a pound and a half, maybe two pound. You're just gonna grab that up and rough chop it like big chunks. But look at this nice juice. Don't throw that away, man. We're gonna put that in our Mornay sauce. This is flavor town right there. Chop, 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 chunky, chunky. You could use that for uh, lobster roll as well. Same thing, very good stuff. So make sure you keep it chunky, guys. Don't chop it too fine. It's very important to have texture when you eat into the lobster. With the mushroom and the shallots and the cheese, you'll see it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, don't waste any of that. This is flavor, guys. 
like I said, this is like gold. So now are we gonna mix the two together? Usually I would just mix a little bit at a time, but you know what? I think it's gonna need it all. There's a lot of meat right there, yes. Stir it very well, make sure all the pieces of meat are well coated. Now you're gonna fill up these carcasses with as much meat as you can. Uh, try to do that evenly. Basically, we're gonna cook that in two stages. We're gonna put it under the broiler without the breadcrumb, and then we're gonna have the breadcrumb and then finish it up again, just to make sure the breadcrumb's gonna turn out golden and delicious. Once these babies are filled up, we're gonna put them under the broiler for like four to five minutes. Just keep it a close eye, cause it's gonna happen fast. You don't want too much color. Don't do like I'm doing right now. Grab a bigger spoon at this point, cause obviously I'm, uh, I could do that in half the time just by grabbing a spoon that is twice the size come on bear with me it's so tasty yeah that bites for me sorry guys i can't wait oh there's a little bit left yummy yummy in my belly at this point guys the antenna's got to be tucked in gonna make sure you do that so if not it's gonna burn under the broiler and now these babies are going inside for five minutes yum yum so at this point we're gonna put uh we're gonna do our topping for the lobster you're gonna melt one tablespoon of butter and we're gonna add this to one cup of panko uh that is not toasted of course and to this we're gonna add one tablespoon of parsley some salt half a teaspoon a couple pinch i'll be honest with you uh, some old bay here that's something that i really enjoy with seafood uh i would say a pinch or so as you can tell i'm not too sure myself so we're gonna put two little uh scissor pinch very important then uh, some parmesan cheese 10 grams just to uh pair up with our mornay sauce so it blends all together cracked pepper to taste very important cracked pepper on everything you know me and just we're gonna mix it with our bare hand here it's our perfect tools to use for this you're looking for a, a clumpy consistency it has to be holding up all together I think it needs more fat, so we're gonna have to add more fat. We're gonna add olive oil, just maybe half a teaspoon, just, just a teardrop, nothing crazy. Yeah, that's perfect right there. It's looking good, guys. Yay, lobster time! Oh my god, I can't wait to dig into this. You're looking for those little bubbly bits? Now we're gonna add our crumbs. It's just to give it more texture when we're gonna dig into this, because the sauce and the mushroom and the lobster is soft. So now with the panko, Top it up very generously, uh, and then we're gonna add that in the oven again for two to three minutes until it's golden brown. Keep a close eye on this, guys, because this turns black in a second. Oh! Son of a bitch! So this, guys, obviously you can pair it up with anything you want. Baked potato, uh, vegetable, but today we're gonna go light because it's a rich dish. We're just gonna do a tossed salad. Um, super simple, nothing crazy about this. Lemon, just to taste. So a little lemon juice, cherry tomatoes from my garden that we're gonna add at the end there just to garnish it. I love these things are like candy. It's so, so good. And um, <laughs> I guess I just toss a tomato to my dog. Two tablespoons of olive oil, good olive oil, very important from Italian center, of course. And we're gonna use salt, season to your liking, I'll be honest with you. Simple as that. Again, you're the chef, so pepper to taste. Looking sexy. We're gonna have to toss this. And then if you're a pro like me, you can use your knife skill and do some julienne carrot matchstick, just like this. Took me years to achieve that, guys. It's all in the French uh, culinary world exam. Don't screw that up. Tossy, tossy. I would suggest you grab a bigger bowl because obviously this was not the right size. And then you plate it up. Couple tomatoes on top, Julian carrots. Make sure the nice leaf are on top so it looks sexier, yes. And then the main event. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to see that in my belly, guys. Look at that baby. So guys, at this point, I'm not really fond of these antennas, so we're just gonna cut them off. This is so good at this point, you know what? You gotta try this. Like, it's a classical dish, and there's a reason for it. All together, it's just like Evan on a plate. You gotta try that dish. Honestly, it's a great start to our series, and I sure hope you're gonna follow us. Take a picture, tag me, and comment. And if I can help with your recipe, I sure will. Please follow, subscribe, and share the love, guys. See you next time.